Ready, hips back, skip, and squat. Knees out, Emily. Take a look at your elbow pits. That's where they, you're in a good spot there, Emily, right there. And stand. Now for you, Emily, go and relax. Emily, because your femurs are like 30 feet long. I might have you go a little bit wider so that the geometry of it, because if I can squat with my feet together, but if my butt's way behind me, where's my torso going? Forward. So if I bring my feet wider, it gives me space to bring my pelvis in underneath me so I'm upright instead of being back here, which is kind of what's happening to you. That's why you're like this. But if you can come here, you can bring your hips forward, um, that's going to be a lot better. But do you feel tightness in here? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. <laughs> the best way to fix that is to just spend time in those positions. I know it sounds really weird, but your body is, for most people, our flexibility issues aren't actually soft tissue related. Here's my favorite test. Take a pull. Squat to the bottom. Yeah, you want to try it? Squat to the bottom with me. So do you guys think she has adequate flexibility to be in this position? Heck yeah. Now, can you let go of the pole without falling over? And then she, her position changes. Right, you guys see the difference there? So the difference here, mobility is this word that we've been throwing around for the last five, six years, and flexibility as synonymous. In the flexibility course, we've changed the paradigm where flexibility is your passive range of motion, your mobility is your active range of motion. The difference between the two is your motor control. So for some people, they think they need to spend all this time stretching and doing all this stuff, when really what they need is practice, right? So we have this really cool tool we learned at the level one course, right? Do you guys remember squat therapy? So it's just a game of, okay, you're gonna start right here, and you're gonna go down really slow. Can you continue to hit this position and go a little bit lower, and get a little bit lower, and a little bit lower, until you get to the very, very bottom and not fall over. So the best way to train that is to get to the spot where it's sticky and you're like, oh gosh, what am I doing? I'm going to fall over and spend time there. So your body starts to rewire those neural connections and then you'll be able to control that position again. Because clearly you're flexible enough to be there. It's just in the bottom, something's not connecting between here and here. And that's why you're falling over and losing position. So that's the good news. Most people do have flexibility to squat properly. It's just that your body is saying this position is not safe or I'm afraid of this position or I just don't know what to do with it. Right? If you take someone with frozen shoulder, like my dad, his arm can only go to here. But if I were to put him under anesthesia and remove his nervous system altogether, pretty sure I could take him here. Okay? Most of the time, our flexibility issues are because our nervous system deems a position unsafe or it's afraid of it. Because it's not strong there or it's been hurt there before. And the way that we fix it is we try to recalibrate the system into, think, into knowing that that's safe. Okay. If we spend a lot of time like this <laughs> on our phone or at our computer or at a desk like this, then this is the only position we're going to know. And we'll have a hard time getting to this position. Right? If our arms never go like this, it's never going to want to go there. For most athletes, their flexibility issues are more of an issue of trust, really. It's like a relationship, right? You need to get to know someone first before you trust them and then before you can access them. So same thing with positions and movement. Your body needs to know the position first. If you don't spend time in the bottom of the squat, your body's not going to want to go there ever, especially under speed or under load. All right? Those are the two things that like, are going to be the biggest limiting factor. So raise your hand if you know someone who can squat below parallel, but then you try to get them to snatch, and then they can't get below parallel to save their life. Right? Or if you try to load someone up on the back squat, and they're like, I can't get lower. It's because the body, it's, it's self-preserving. It doesn't want to go into the position where it feels like it's going to get hurt, so it doesn't let you go there. So your game would be to spend some time there, or the moneymaker thing, right? Did you feel like you had more engagement, more feedback when you had the plate in front of you? It's easier to bring your hips forward. So you can use that drill and then progressively use a lighter weight until you remove the feedback and your body knows what to do with it. So we kind of went on a tangent there, but I thought that was useful, right? Because the overhead squat is going to be your biggest limiting factor for the snatch. If your overhead squat's not upright, you're going, to be you're going to have a really hard time stabilizing weight under there, especially really fast. Cool.